Yo, what's up everybody? It's Dave Brodeur, AKA Brilli, and today we're gonna to talk about the best practices and basics of the Render Network. The whole goal is to make sure that you feel comfortable when you jump up onto the Render Network because you know you are gonna be paying money for the renders. Even though it's really cost efficient and super effective, there are some things that you really should know prior to submitting your job to the render network and it can save you a ton of troubleshooting and hassle later on down the road. So this is part one of a multi-part series. So definitely check back and see what new videos pop up for these basic and best practices here. Uh, without further ado, let's jump right in to this render network. Here we go. Baking your animations into Olympus can be very helpful. It can be useful inside of Cinema 4D just to speed up your screen performance and while you're working in that file. But in addition to this, as we're talking about exporting this into an Orbix file, it can really help speed up that export. In addition to this, it can also show you if baking is even possible at all for that object as we move into getting into Orbix and onto the render network. Now in cinema, there's a couple different ways. You can export the whole scene or you can just export individual objects. If you need to make objects vanish or fade away or turn it on and off, don't use Cinema 4D's traffic lights or Cinema 4D's display tag to do this. Instead, place an octane object tag on the object and animate the visibility slider in that tag. This will solve any of your issues when you're running this onto the render network. When you're building your materials in Octane and Cinema 4D, it's really important to not use the old bitmap node from C4D. Instead, make sure you're always using the image texture node and then importing and loading in your texture-based assets that way. Before you submit your job through the render network, take a look at your scene that you're gonna submit and see how much VRAM your scene actually uses. From that value, at about 20%, you know, or two to three gigabytes extra to that. When you go on to the job submitter on page three, go all the way down to the bottom and you'll see a drop down menu at the bottom right. This is where you can adjust that minimum VRAM requirement. This is highly recommended to use for bigger scenes. What it's gonna do is it's gonna give you only the nodes that have enough VRAM to fit your scene. If you have more VRAM than the node that you submit to, well, what that's gonna do is it's going to make it go into out of core and be slower and it's gonna cost you more. This can also result in flickering of your assets or them just not fully loading into that node. A scene with super high resolution or even denoiser might need a little bit more. Uh, so, you know, you can just pick and choose from there, but two to three gigabytes in addition to what your VRAM of that scene is should be pretty good. And that's it, everybody. Thank you for watching part one. Remember, part two is going to be following up here really quickly. So make sure to check that one out, too. And let's get those renders going.